Let's take a look at the 3Play 4800 workflow uh, from start to finish using a few different workflows. Now, when we first get to the event, we're going to fire up the 3Play. We're going to be on the home page. First thing that you're going to want to do is create a new session for your event. You want to give that session a name. We're going to go up here. We're going to call this one 3Play 4800 Training. You can call yours whatever you'd like. Now we could use another session as a template to start this session, but for this particular session we're going to start from scratch. We're going to do a four channel redundant session and this is going to put streams one and two going to media drives D and F and streams three and four going to E and G creating an automatic backup for us. Now our session drive is the D drive with all the session information and our video standard is going to be NTSC. Our output resolution is going to be 1080i and this will set the output resolution for all of the video outputs of the 3Play unit. Now, once we have all of these variables set up, we're ready to take a look at our social media configuration. You can click on the social media area up on the top. Here you can log in using your username and password to Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, or an FTP. And we've set up a file copy path to our media drive here to a new folder called shares. And all of our shared media will show up in that. Now I do want those to be smaller, more easier to manage files. So we're gonna go ahead and click on prepare for web. And that will compress those files when they're output to our shared media folder here, giving people external from the 3Play access to some of the media during the show. And again, we could set up a watermark on those images that are going to be going up to those social media sites as well if we want to. Once we've got that configured, we close that, and now we're ready to go to our sessions page by clicking on the Create Session button. Once in the sessions page, you're ready to start importing media that you might want to use during the production. Now, you might have commercial bumpers, uh, intros or outros to instant replays, even still images and music that you might want to use during a playlist or a highlight reel. All this needs to be imported. We're going to go to the Import Media button, go to our Media Importer, and we're going to look at our computer. And I happen to have a thumb drive with some media on it here. We've got some video clips. I'm going to left click on one and hold down shift, click on the other, it selects them all. We're going to import all of those video clips. They'll show up here in our media importer. We're also going to go back out and import our audio. So we'll select all of the audio in the same fashion and open that in the importer. And we have a still image that we want to use as well. Our new tech logo and we will load that up. So all of our media is now ready for import. There's only one clip in here that doesn't know whether or not it needs to be transcoded, but we're going to go ahead and bring it in without transcoding. I know that that video clip will play. I've played it back in three plays before. So we're ready to go. I'm just going to go ahead and import the media. Now that all the files have imported successfully, we can click OK. We can close down the media importer. We can look at those files by clicking on clips. It'll show us the import folder, and again, that's in D, Media, Clips, 3Play Training, and here are the clips that we imported for use. Uh, we have the same thing for our still images, our import, import file here with our one still image, and our sound and music with all of the audio files that we brought in for use in our production. Now we're ready to go ahead and start the session by clicking the Start Session button. Once in the live desktop, we can configure our inputs and outputs, make sure everything is right. I'm going to double click on the inputs, make sure we have the right resolution selected from our drop down. We can do that for each input. We're only using three cameras, our fourth camera is blank, and that's okay. To configure the outputs, you double click on the output, you can get to output A or B. Here you can rename those outputs and adjust their audio. You can also adjust the multi-viewer. Probably best to set up the multi-viewer to show the clip list playback monitors. And again, you can adjust that resolution there if you need to. Uh, make sure that you've got the transitions loaded up inside of the transition palette, the appropriate ones you want. Again, you can use the little plus in the upper right-hand corner to load any transition into any of those areas in the palette, except for fade, which is always there. Uh, you can also check your audio level on a transition that has audio like this one. See, we 
you've got the audio VU meters here on the side and you've got the adjustment for the sound for the sound effects here so just make sure that you're not peaking in the red when you run a sound effect like this just bouncing right there at the bottom of the red which is what we want uh, we also want to make sure that we have autoplay turned on so that anything that we transition to automatically plays. We have our check mark by autoplay, so that's good and ready to go. Uh, we also have our clip list right down here. We can rename our clip bins for our appropriate event. We're just going to leave them right now. And we also have our playlist area. Uh, the tags are already set up. I'm going to hit shift tag. It's going to reveal our tags bin. And I'm going to hold down shift and use my tab buttons and I can get through the tabs inside of the tag area. And again, we have teams, east and west, our player numbers and our actions for American football set up and ready to go in there. And again, I'm gonna hold shift and hit the tag button to hide our tags area, but they are up and ready to go. We're gonna hit tag to make sure that we're not in the tagging mode and we're ready to take a look at creating our first event.